What is up? Fellas, JPS Love is here. NCAA Football 2008. Road woes. UNLV end up taking down Wisconsin University 31-19. to They've won five games in a row. My guess is uh, they're still counting uh, bowl game and the game before that from last season. But back to the Texas Aggies. Heisman watch. Early favorite. I don't know why it's saying early favorite when the first fucking dude on the list is Tim Tebow. <coughs> anyway... Mike Goodson off to a very, very nice start in both the receiving and rushing game for this team. Hatback number 44 for Auburn is racking up the yards. Colt McCoy gone down a little bit in the rankings, but still, I think, uh, is this EJ Manuel? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't remember what this uh, quarterback was for Florida State back then. Um, but road woes. Wisconsin goes down. Texas A&M still top five team in the country. Up against an A-plus overall Miami uh, U team. Hurricanes hosting us yet again. Um, don't know why, but hey, it's fun to go in there. Maybe, you know, just anyways, it helps. Considering we needed more strength in the schedule, apparently, to make a case for the national championship in the previous season. It is what it is. A lot of the recruits were talking about, oh, yeah, we're looking forward to your game right here against the 40th team in the country on the road. Like, as if, you know, at this point, like, that's a big, I mean, fellas, we already just fucking stomped on Iowa. In Iowa City Walk and shit on that team like it was nothing. I mean, Ryan Tannehill was starting that game replacing Draw Johnson. Draw Johnson's obvious, obviously better at this point. This team's headed into Miami, Florida. You never know what could happen except for downpours of rain, heavy drugs, a very obscene nightlife on the clubs near the beach in the nightclubs. And I think pretty much you can guarantee an A&M run right here. This team's kicking ass. Not nearly as good as they were last season, but Texas A&M, number five in the country, here in Miami, against what is technically a better team on paper. Lee Corso says otherwise, but pretty much at this point, it's kind of like Ronald Reagan towards the end of his uh, tenure as president, kind of just deteriorating in front of our eyes. Maybe a president right now with his mind deteriorating as well. But hey, that's other news, fellas. Kicking it off to start this game to Miami, Miami, Florida. Hosting right here, the Hurricanes, first play from scrimmage, wide receiver number 87, nice little nine-yard catch by this offense, nearly 10 yards as it's second in inches, and a beautiful run by Hatback number five, a guy pretty much last year in the matchup between these two teams, he was heading into this game with similar stats, similar momentum, they like to use him a ton in this offense, but again, if we can just get that front seven looking just like that, it should be a win, nice tackle right there by middle linebacker number 36. And then a terrible pass, but a beautiful, beautiful swat right there by impact player number 27, Mr. Peterson. And it's going to be a and ball again, just not much going to start off this game in general for the offenses. But Gerard Johnson backs up, throws it out to Mr. Martellus Bennett. Should be easily the number one tight end in the country. He was number four when it came to the Mackey Award last season. Now he is one of the highest rated players in the country, and especially at the tight end position, 99 overall, highly athletic for his size. He's just huge in general, but this team overall, you got Mike Goodson, you got Javorski Lane, Gerard Johnson's very athletic. Um, you do have better wide receivers this season, in my opinion. And speaking of very good wide receivers, Mike Goodson out of the backfield, beautiful play after the catch, already more than 500 total yards, and that's not going to be all-purpose yards. He hasn't really done much anything so far this season when it comes to special teams, but you know it packs a punch. It's going to be there. And speaking of packing a punch, Javorski Lane ends up making a sick catch on this one. Terrible defense by Miami. They're going to give up the first points of the game. Javorski Lane, a and I mean, a dude with actually a pretty underrated arm. That no one really ever talked about until, unless you're like a fan witnessing him. But threw a couple bombs on these halfback passes like he was LaDainian Tomlinson. And Texas A&M ends up having him on the receiving end. 7-0 to zero, Miami still not getting much done on the offensive end. Incomplete pass earlier. Going to be a completed pass here to wide receiver number 87. But not good enough to keep the sticks moving. But good enough right here to keep the sticks moving. It's Mike Goodson. He's going down the field. Just barely touched, taking away his momentum. He was, I mean, he was off to the races. That's just going to be a guy you're not going to be able to stop. Then a botch played right here, but fortunately enough, you got a quarterback with 89, 88 type-ish speed, somewhere around there in 90. 
I mean, just this backfield is very, very quick with the likes of Mike Goodson. And then here we go. The slow man right here, Javorski Lane. Nice little juke move right there. Left that guy behind him. But Mike Goodson going to open things up for Texas A&M. Nice first down run. We are officially in the red zone yet again. 7-0, Javorski Lane helping this team move down the field, adding on to his performance earlier with a nice catch. And then you got Gerard Johnson making his way down the field, leading to the one-yard line, second and one. And Javorski Lane, who is basically going to be set up in this offense as the number one fullback, the top slot for the depth chart. I mean, technically he was a pretty much well-established fullback that they utilize a lot in the rushing game in real life. And today, it's not the Heisman hopeful that's getting the touchdowns. It is two touchdowns so far by Javorski Lane on Texas A&M, and this defense continues to just overproduce for what their talent has been. Maybe it's just been pad production by the teams they face so far. Iowa <clears throat> getting a couple good plays earlier on this season against them, but still, just overall, this defense has played pretty solid. Zero points given up, and then bam, just a huge hit on quarterback number 12, not much going for him. <clears throat> Not much going, and more importantly, for the halfback. Nice little break, uh, broken tackle right there. But it's going to be the weak part of this defense that ends up getting a huge hit. And later on, nice highlight right there by Mike Goodson. Going to fight for an extra three yards on that one in his career. Lustrous career, I'd have to say. A man who was a sophomore just last season. And speaking of a man who's a senior now this year, after being a junior, obviously, last year. But again, uh, Captain Hindsight... Captain Obvious pretty much coming in to explain that one. Javorski Lane's going to be hit again. No, I'm just kidding. It's Mr. Smith, the JUCO recruit, coming into Texas A&M, making already his presence in this offense. Wide receiver number nine, a guy that didn't, had a couple touchdown receptions last season. Just not much of an impact in general. But again, trying to hit our man. And it's just the number one tight end in the country. This guy's been dropping balls left and right. I don't, I don't get it personally but again it just shows you just how large both of those human beings are Gerard Johnson was like six five six six pretty sure pretty sure he's still an inch or two below Martellus Bennett but the height right here helps him lean into the end zone his momentum carries him up it's 21 or 20 to zero Anim is now officially shitting on this Miami team yet again um, it's just I don't know what more to say didn't expect uh, the likes of Miami to be coming out this poor, but I expected it to be a better game. I just expected it to be a better game overall. Don't know why, uh, having to deal with this. But I, I, sorry, folks. It's just it's just an ass whooping going on here. And speaking of an ass whooping, Smith gets just destroyed on this play, but only after the damage was already done. 14 yard completion. Going to run the no huddle offense after the first down. Gerard Johnson and company. Moving down the field, keeping this offense going as Texas A&M still trying to maintain a large lead. And after I do that, it's going to be a jinx. Mike Goodson ends up adding, I mean, hey, this guy's the Heisman hopeful. Add a tackle to this man's stats this season. Of course, after what has been kind of a rocky start so far by Gerard Johnson to start off the year. A guy that not nearly as efficient as um, Steve McGee was the previous season. But again, this is a first-year starter compared to Steve McGee, who's been pretty much starting all three years that he was at Texas A&M at quarterback. And here we go. Back to A&M ball because, like I said, nothing is going on whatsoever for this Miami offense, and that should be a face mask. After draw, Johnson pitches it out to Javorski Lane to earn himself 20-plus yards on that run and 15-plus yards after the penalty. And then draw Johnson moving around. What's going to happen here? It's a terrible pass. And honestly, at this point, I just don't... I should have been running the ball more. It is what it is. Second quarter, though, I mean, do you blame me for the most part? But when looking at it, eh, maybe you should have passed the, or uh, ran the ball a little bit more, considering the lead and everything. Just terrible pass, just to accept the sack at that point. And he's athletic enough. I don't have to concede having a bad play to begin with. Shouldn't have just thrown that at all. But again, Texas A&M's defense showing up. Not much having at all in this possession whatsoever by Miami and then there you go 255 total yards of offense compared to what the 48 or 50 by Miami but it is a nice hit right there after what seemed to be possibly a nice run but seven rushes for 48 yards play action again right here 
It's going to be a pass out to tight end number three. It's just, it's just a mismatch for the ages. A dude who's most likely a foot and a half taller than anybody else on the field. And right there, a man who's also a foot and a half taller than anybody else on the field gets chased down by another large human being on this very talented defense that has just been overwhelmed because the sheer amount of plays that have been able to be ran against them as this Miami offense has just been straight R. Kelly doo-doo butter. And then right here, just right when I say that, huge, huge play by the quarterback. It's just, I, I didn't expect him to have this good a speed, but um, it's whatever. It's just third first down of the day um, compared to the 15 first downs. Imagine what? Was that a 40-yard run or something like that? 22 yards on the day. So the man was sitting in the red before that, hitting Black Friday right there for his business, finally cashes out after that long run, but that should have been picked off on that play. Two players not able to work together on that one, but right here, setting up the field goal, it will be the first points against this A&M defense who has been playing shut, literally just like lights out, shut out, but no longer a shutout, 21-3, to and now this offense kind of getting a little bit too laxed as now Miami's starting to get two or three sacks here in the second half and let that be the third interception by Gerard Johnson. But again, the Heisman. Watch for this man, the hopeful. Another big play after an interception. Got the tackle earlier and now gets a fumble recovery. Texas A&M with the ball yet again. Bad juke move. Whatever though. Damage is already done. Gerard Johnson moves this offense down the field. What's the play going to be done right here? Terrible pass. Should have thrown it to Martellus Bennett earlier on in that play. But, it I mean, it is what it is. Flag on the play, though. It is roughing the passer against Miami. We do expect this Miami team not to be the most disciplined of programs just based upon their history, but they're usually better and more capable of getting shit done. Just not today, and here we go later on in the drive. It's going to be Javorski and let uh, Javorski Lane yet again. Not Yane let, it is Lane yet Again, and it's going to be a third touchdown by the backup running back, the starting fullback on this offense. And honestly, four rushes, 27 yards, two touchdowns, and I believe he had nearly 30 yards on just that one catch so far today. They make it 28-3. to Not much going when it comes to touchdowns by Mike Goodson, but a beautiful play by the freshman cornerback, Mr. Price. And I can tell you what, that wide receiver paid the price against Mr. Price and just huge, huge hit. Actually, no, it was a running back on flats. And a Mr. James out of Miami, who for the most part, a man who's been averaging over 140 yards of total offense, I think just on the ground, let alone. And this on this play, another bullshit-ass play. And the quarterback just sneaks his way through. I don't know if it's a CPU coming out with some random bullshit last minute, but it is what it is. It looked like that play was just stocked up from the get-go, but whatever. It is what it is. 49, yard, uh, 49 yards now. On the day by this quarterback, I'm pretty sure 60 or 70 were just on those two runs. So he's been held in check for the most part. My girlfriend decides to get in front of me and, uh, while I was at, I do remember this. She stepped right in front of me while I was doing this play right there. It would have been tipped, right? It would have been tipped and it been a successful defensive play on that one. But it is a nice completion. It's going to lead to some junk time. Stats for the running back, USC right there, number one in the country. No one gives a shit. Technically, they're a number 130th for all we care when it comes to just, what, USC back on probation, Pete Carroll days return. And speaking of returns, beautiful move right there. It's an onside kick. And to continue the fuckery against this Miami team, huge, huge return by Mr. Smith. Not because it was needed in this game, but just because it's pretty damn sick to see an onside kick return. A&M just blowing this team out. He has two catches on the day. I don't know why he would bring his catches up, but whatever. I, I guess you would... What? I, he hasn't returned anything else. I'm pretty sure that's been Mike Goodson for the most part, but right there, strikes his pose, stays in it like a statue, and then this quarterback just not able to shed that one off. Two sacks on the day by left end number 84, who is opposite the star right end, Michael Bennett, again, brother of Martellus Bennett, 25 point lead and then Mike Goodson finds himself with a nice first down run right here Javorski Lane nice first down run and now here as the clock begins to wind down Jav- Gerard Johnson finds himself down the field gonna make a nice little move but just not good enough here on fourth down 
But he's going to give it to Javorski Lane. Maybe if I would have ran a little bit on the left, would have led to a last-minute touchdown. Pretty much a last-minute hoorah, last-minute fuck you to this Miami team. But hey, another type of fuck you is to get up some nice stats for this kicker who almost won the Groza last season. But hey, speaking of wins, nice one right here against Miami, Florida. Fran Chaboni continues <clears throat> his legacy. I believe that's four wins now in the season as it's a nice win against Miami here in Miami, Florida. As always, fellas, this team's looking good. You know, just not the most talented or anything, but still undefeated. Take it easy and have a good one.